Welcome everyone. Today we are looking to do a video on the uh, V5 Vampire. Okay, so this is my copy. I was able to finally get a copy for myself. These have been flying out the door. So I ordered a lot more, but in saying that, um, I think we've only got two left in stock. The ones that you see right behind me, I've just set them up. <laughs> um, and this was a slightly kicked in copy, so I decided to keep this for myself as I can't really sell that, yeah? And rather than return it, um, yeah, so to keep mm -hmm. it so, opening it up. Now these videos that I'm doing are going to show the decks. It's not so much a box opening, as just going through the decks and seeing what's in it so if you're an established player that maybe hasn't had the time to go look through the decks maybe you're listening to this while you're doing other work uh, this is pretty much for you as well as a new player into vampire for the first time wondering what each of the vampires do or the vampire clans do in this box uh, that's what I'm going to go through and have a quick chat about it. So today we're actually tackling the Tremere. So first of all, the rule book. Love the rule book. Love the visual aspect of it and everything about it. Nicely laid out. Like when I open this, it's all just quality, which I love. So you got the cards there and very good that they will tell you how to enact your strategy with the deck. So it's always worth spending about two three minutes reading through this because it's very helpful in playing the deck especially if you're a first time player they're the blood counters i'm not popping these because i've got my own glass blood counters and i'm also getting stuff ready for the community as well so stay tuned for that if you do have any interest in glass beads uh, for vampire get in touch with me uh, we'll see how you like them because I am looking for feedback in regards to them. So you do get all five decks. It's fantastic value. Like for the price that I'm doing it at, like you get one, two, three. Oh, I can't I can't hold five decks, yeah? Three, four, five. Alright, maybe I lie. There you go. <laughs> Today we are doing this one, the Tremere. So Tremere are the blood sorcerers of the vampires, okay? They take blood. They were not initially vampires, they were mages, wizards. And they found a vampire, they did their ritual spells and magic, and they tried to finish off that uh, bloodline, or bloodline, or... Um, vampire sect or not sect so much as well we'll just say bloodline just for um, argument's sake they tried to finish them off and in doing so became vampires themselves whether they were successful or not is something of conjecture <laughs> but without going any more into the history first of all we have our vampires which we have 12 vampires now the first vampire that you see on this, it's very good. Now, this camera that I'm using, unfortunately, isn't great, but it's got three disciplines, all at superior for this vampire, and this one's name Alec, okay? And it's good that they actually have this one on the front because it pretty much gives you the three disciplines, all at superior in this case, but that's not important. The three disciplines that this clan uses. Now, all specs, which is the eye, and they're very good at intercepting and have a minor ability at bouncing what we call bleeds, yeah? So if you've played the game, you need to bleed your prey to bleed them dry, pretty much, of all their blood counters, and that's how you oust them out of the game, thereby earning points yourself towards winning the game. They've also got Dominate, which also assists with that. When they come across to bleed their prey, they're most likely bouncing that type, or not bouncing, increasing that bleed but the ability also allows them to bounce a bleed as well so they're going to be very hard to try and get through now you will get through they're not going to always have the cards in hand but do expect that if you are coming across a tremere and you do start trying to bleed them and bumping up your bleeds you're most likely going to be bleeding someone else yeah <laughs> maybe helping them because you're going to bleed their prey which is your grand prey which you want to oust you don't want the Tremere to oust for you. 
And the other ability that they've got is uh, Thaumaturgy, which is their blood magic. Usually used to siphon blood off an individual or out of an individual, like blood just comes out of their pores, their eyes, their mouth, everything. Or they've got the ability to do what we call aggravated damage, which vampires are very scared of and will usually go straight into a sleeping state named as torpor or it can destroy them so yeah very good so we've got two copies of each vampire so alec with uh, advanced disciplines in all of them we've got uh chrysanthemum interesting name <laughs> uh, i won't waste too much time in these um inez tristeo which is who is on the front of the packet. Now she's a prince. We've just, um, Alec was also a prince, giving them two votes each. We've got Chrysanthemum, who is a primogen. Then you've got Laureen, who is normal. You've got Lloyd Brooks, who is also a primogen. So all, automatically we've seen um, one, two, three out of five vampires having votes. So it's really telling you that this is most likely going to hold its own in votes. In saying that, we just came across non-voters. Nasia, just Camarilla, Patrick, Rosalina. I thought there were two of every vampire. Two of the most important vampires, I would think. Trevon Parker. Now these are lower bloods. Trevon Parker is a six, so he's pretty up there but like rosalina was a three you've got patrick that was a five and nasir that was a four so there is the ability to get out some younger vampires if you find that to start bleeding or start getting things for you and in saying getting things let's start looking at the deck and seeing what is available so 0.44 magnum just one of them if you get it in there it's good for the maneuver as well as providing damage at long range and it's two range damage so pretty good gives the optional maneuver you just don't want to go to second round if you can help it with these now these are different to the Tremere from the Anta Tribute, which is the older deck which gets out all the Nefandus mages and is so annoying and so hard to come up against a real contender this one does things a little bit differently and that's what we're going to be seeing so academic hunting ground giving your vampires blood every turn now, Apportation, Press, only usable to continue combat. So they do have the ability to continue combat, but at the advance, they've also got a Maneuver, okay? There's four of those cards, so it tells you that they're looking to actually give you some protection or some control in combat with these. Arcane Library, during the influence phase, you may add one blood to Tremere in your uncontrolled region. So you can lock this not tap but lock this uh, to get an extra transfer to bring out more vampires yeah you want that early in the game you don't want that late in game it's really not going to be as useful and if you do get it late in game make sure you are throwing it out a very important aspect of this game that seems to elude people a lot of the time is that you need to discard your cards every turn to keep your deck cycling there are so many times where I've been in games myself where you've got cards and you're like, I just need I just need to get this off. And you're holding those cards before you know it. Three turns have gone by and you could have done something with another card that you could have had. Yes, it may actually be a case that when something happens, it's like, yes, I had the cards for it. Your game moves a lot better if you're moving cards along. So at the beginning, if you're trying to get something off, yes, keep your cards but as you get to mid the mid game or early mid game, you start needing to get rid of cards and sometimes they're not worth it. And that will cost you two pull as well. Uh, thereby allowing your predator, who you're his prey, uh, a lot easier time as that's two blood he doesn't need to bleed from you, yeah? All right, now we're starting to get into things. I just counted six cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a big one, a bonding. Now, this is a huge aspect of this deck. So it's got plus one bleed, and that's all you can bleed with as a modifier, but it's the advanced ability that this is really concentrating on. Oh no, sorry. Bear with me, there is another card in here that's the main staple of a deck, but 
This is plus one bleed and plus one stealth. Still very good. You're gonna need the stealth if you're getting through some of these decks. And with their bleed potential, this plus one stealth is very important, yeah? So apologies for messing that up. Um, we've got Bowl of Convergence, only one in there. The bearer with all specs, which is the eye ability, remember, to intercept, gets plus one intercept. The bearer with superior all specs can burn one blood during an action to get an additional plus one. So very good, especially if you get onto someone with the diamonds ability with the eye, with the, uh, the diamond shape with the eye. You've got plus one intercept as standard and you can burn a blood to get another plus one intercept. Um, yeah, very good. Chantry, lock this card and burn one pool or one blood from a ready Tremere you control during your master phase to move a Tremere from your torpor to the controller's ready region. Fantastic. So at the beginning of your turn, when you've untapped everything, including vampires that are in torpor, you can move one blood from a vampire and you lock this to get that vampire out of torpor so no one has to rescue them. They, they're not spending extra blood to get out. It's a fantastic card. Yeah. Once again, look, this one doesn't cost you anything. Uh, very good to even play mid-game if you've got it, yeah? All right, deflection. There's four deflections in there. It was the one I was talking about. It does cost the vampire one blood, but if someone's bleeding you, you can bounce that to maybe your prey. Hopefully your predator is ousting your prey for you so then you get the pool uh the blood because when you oust a prey you get six blood from the blood bank to add to your pool you also get a point towards winning the game all right eyes of argus only usable during a directed action against you plus two intercept so even if you don't need it or a card you control plus two intercept no no you need the intercept you need the stealth to in order to play this but this is only for directed action so if someone's going for a gun or rescuing something or going to hunt you can't actually do that but if they're coming towards you with anything as what we call a directed action or a d action now there's six of these cards you can use this for plus two intercept at the advanced only usable by a locked vampire this vampire wakes they ignore the requirement to be unlocked for playing reaction cards and attempting to block until the end of the action so at advanced, you can use this on undirected actions, okay? But the fact that it's got plus two intercept as a basic and the main aspect of this game is surviving with people bleeding you out or political action. So 50% of that, of what I just mentioned, you'll be able to block with plus two intercept. With these decks, yeah, you probably get to plus three stealth, but plus two intercept is fantastic. Could you imagine that with a bowl of convergence, you're getting up to plus four intercept. All right, govern the unaligned. Now, this is the one that I said that the deck was mostly based on, and the fact that it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve copies of govern the unaligned tells you that this is a major staple of this deck. And what does it do? Okay, bleed at plus two. That's great. That's at basic. Will cost you a blood to do that. Or you can spend the blood instead to do this at the advanced level if you've got the diamond shape on your vampire. Plus one stealth action. Very good. Add three blood to a younger vampire in your uncontrolled region. All right, so the aspect of this deck, okay, is to get out someone such as Alec and she's seven cap and you're bringing out all your other vampires now let me just take a look at the capacity of the other vampires you got six three five four six four five six and seven so alec is the eldest of the all the vampires you need it would be great to get alec out failing that you want to see Inez. okay you want to be doing these abilities for governing it unaligned at plus one stealth to get three blood on a younger vampire and bring those other vampires out rinse and repeat as often as possible in doing that you're not using your pull in order to get vampires out there by making it harder for your predator to bleed you out or to vote you out in certain respects okay 
it's a major aspect of that deck and you know you're really looking for this card to be in your hand at the start of the game uh, get lucky with it yeah and hopefully out of the, you know that's four out of the 12 vampires that would be fantastic to have in your crypt yeah if you got if you bought another set of these decks or managed to get more vampires you'd possibly um, look at the numbers maybe put a third alec in it really depends you don't want to be stuck with two or even three alex out in your opening draw all right kevlar vest just to protect against damage uh, once each combat the bearer can prevent two damage from gun strikes or one damage from any other source the minion can only have one kevlar vest costs you as the methuselah one to arm this on someone magic of the smith plus one stealth action search your library for an equipment card and equip this vampire with it okay you have to pay the cost of the weapon you can't just put it on them it does cost your vampire one to use this plus whatever the weapon costs as above but this is a action is at plus three stealth if you've got the advanced formaturgy okay two of those cards so it really is looking for um equipment cards so bowler convergence we saw the magnum we haven't really seen anything else yet so let's keep going mirror walk quite a few mirror walks so let's see what this does one two three four five six cards of this mirror walk now do not replace until your discard phase ouch okay so in this game you get to replace every time you're playing a card you get to replace the card there is no draw step at the beginning of uh, the phase or at the end of the phase there is merely playing cards and then redrawing or right at the end you can discard one to pick one up yeah very different from other games and it's fantastic once you get that going and that's why i said you need to get rid of cards because you need to get that action going to get through the deck and oust your prey as quick as possible all right so it gives plus one stealth at basic thaumaturgy at advanced as above and if this action is blocked lock the blocking minion and end the action before block resolution so effectively you're going with this mirror walk remember there's six cards of this go for an action they block it and no combat yeah really frustrating for all those combat decks that want to do something now this one there's only one of i didn't really think much of it it cost me one to tap a minion of my prey didn't really think much of it until i used it and my prey was going i wish you didn't do that so i was able to get through some bleeds and don't think oh, i can't even remember if i was able to take that person out i think i was but not that turn now on the qv uh there's four cards for on the qv allows you to wake your vampire that's already locked just so they can block an action it does not unlock them it just wakes them up so they can uh well it's not just vampires it's minions as well with this one so a minion can play only one on qv per unlock phase so it's the minion wakes not the vampire so very good if you've got allies as well uh, they can react as if they were unlocked but they still remain locked all right pentex subversion only one cost you two put this card on a ready minion the minion cannot block any other minion can burn this card as a d action all right so very good stopping people blocking as you see so we've got we had a master card being uh misdirection and then pentex subversion being another master card which costs you more now precognition plus one intercept so this is the eye card okay and as above and the vampire can prevent one damage during the first round of the resulting combat if they block fantastic so not only is it giving you the ability to block but you get to prevent one damage in the resulting combat with most vampires they're only doing one damage in the combat and there's not going to usually be a press to continue combat some decks are built around doing that this is hoping it doesn't come up against such a deck okay so spirits touch we've got to it is the eye symbol plus one intercept again as you see the eye is coming out with all the intercept but also as above with one optional maneuver during the resulting combat if this vampire blocks okay so it gives you the extra maneuver there's two of these you are able to block then you run out to long range and 
hopefully wave and not get shot at or birds attack you or rats attack you or anything like that yeah so it is about the intercept and it is about staying alive we've got a sports bike there's the other piece of equipment that you can get with magic of the smith uh, minion gets plus one intercept and you can only have one vehicle costs you as the methuselah one to arm one of your vampires with that so we've seen quite a lot of intercepts a little bit of let's just not have combat a fair bit of bleed bouncing with the option to bleed and that takes us on to the next card which we've got four cards of telepathic misdirection at the basic it gives plus one intercept at the major or the advanced it allows you to bounce a bleed onto someone else hopefully being your so only usable if a minion is bleeding you after blocks are declined so you can decline a block and then they say oh, i'm gonna up the bleed i'm gonna plus three bleed you for a total of four or five bleed and then you go all right lock this reacting vampire so the vampire needs to be unlocked in order to play this change the target of the bleed to another methuselah other than the acting minions controller that methuselah can attempt to block so then they go through the blocking stage of whoever you bounced it onto okay theft of vita now if you do get out to long range which is possibly preferred now we've got quite a few of these cards one two three four five six seven eight nine ten second largest amount in this deck so far range strike steal one blood at the advanced level range strike steal two blood yeah apologies for the camera it's just not going to zoom in like i wanted to and then we've got another card vessel two three four four now nah, four of these now vessel very good card i'm going to read it out to you this is what it looks like put this card on any vampire and you can burn a blood doll so someone else may have played a blood doll there's no blood dolls in this deck blood doll allows you to move your blood between your vampire or back to yourself but you get to burn it with this card and during their unlock phase this vampire's controller can move one blood from this vampire to their pool or from their pool to this vampire so very much are uh, doing the same thing but burning another blood doll you get four of them it costs you one though very good so as you can see with Govern the Unaligned, it was Govern the Unaligned, wasn't it? Um, bear with me one moment, shouldn't be too hard to find. Yeah, Govern the Unaligned, where you're putting three blood on a younger vampire, then you can start vesseling. Once you get them out, you can start... Yeah, it is it is bloating, as well as getting vampires out at very minimal cost to yourself, yeah? Alright, we've got Wasser... <laughs> Wasser Schloss Anif in Austria. Okay, it's a unique location, not costing you anything. And during your master phase, a Tremere you control may move one blood from themselves to this card. Alright. Lock during your influence phase to move all counters on this card to a Tremere in your uncontrolled region. There you go. Not using your resources to get vampires out again. You're using what's on the table to do the work for you. Any minion can burn this card as a D action. Malkavians get plus one stealth in that action, which is unfortunately unfortunate. There will be some history in the backlog of the whole history of the World of Darkness in regards to why Malks get plus one stealth in that action. And wider view. It's also another trifle card, just like uh, we had with Vessel. Put this card in play. You can use one transfer to draw one card from your crypt and then remove a crypt card in your uncontrolled region from the game. So this is very much a one card only. But if you find in your if you find this in your hand and at the same time you haven't got the vampires in your crypt that you need to, this allows you to move a vampire out of the crypt and replace it with another one, hopefully being one that you're looking for, okay? You can use four transfers. So you get four transfers every turn after the first round goes through for most vampires. You can use four transfers to burn this card to gain two pulls. So effectively you pay one for this. You can burn it straight away and get an extra pull if you really need it. Otherwise it helps you move your vampires. If you're getting this mid to late game and you've got no resources to get other vampires out and you don't think you will, get rid of this card please. Don't keep it in your hand and yeah cycle through that deck to get more cards okay so i'm going to try and put this back in an order 
So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I'm just going to put this down. Do it later. Hope you enjoyed that. It gave an overview on the deck and what it does. You can see that it intercepts, it bleeds, it tries to get to long range with combat to start stealing blood, which is hard for vampires because when vampires have the ability to prevent damage, you can't prevent the stealth of blood that's coming out of your pores, out of your eyes, out of your mouth. It's not actually damage per se. You are losing the blood and they're gaining the blood. So it's it is frustrating coming up against these guys when you think you've got them they get out to long range they're only on like two blood because i've been siphoning it off for other things and then they steal your blood and fill themselves back up again yeah it's a great tactic that the tremere use and yeah it keeps them competitive against the other vampires all right so i'll do another video on the rest of the decks one video for each deck hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for all the future ones